Get ready to learn all about the Jewish holiday of Purim in this week's special bonus playlist episode. I'm Lisa Loeb, and you're listening to Have I Got a Story for You, a storytelling podcast from PJ Library. In every episode, PJ Library gives families an update on a classic Jewish folktale or story. And this week, they're tackling the Purim story. You'll hear all about the bravery of Queen Esther and her wise Uncle Mordechai in a version that's easy to listen to with the whole family. After you're done listening, be sure to check out my new album, A Simple Trick to Happiness. Now let's go check on Rita and Al in the studio. It's looking pretty good, but I think if we just tweak a little bit there. Oh, I mean, this holographic paper is so nice. Ah, I just want to be so shiny, you know? Hmm. And just a little bit more glitter and a feather there. Ooh, one more rhinestone. And I think we are done. Ta-da! Al, what do you think of my mask for the costume parade? Uh, Rita, I hit record a few minutes ago. Uh, your, your mask is great, by the way. Uh, it's just, you know, the story. Oh, right. Well, it's fitting that I just finished my mask and that we're recording today. The day of my friend Esther's big Purim costume extravaganza. Yeah. It is going to be so great. I'm pretty excited about the costume you got me. Uh, who knew they made radioactive flying dinosaur pajamas for grown-ups? Uh, but Rita... Why do you dress up on Purim? So glad you asked, because that is exactly what we're talking about today. Al, and all our friends listening, I'm going to tell you the story of Purim. On this week's very special, very festive episode of Have I Got a Story for You, we'll be talking about Purim. What's Purim, you ask? Well, it's my favorite holiday, tied with Shavuot. On Purim, communities all over the world celebrate the brilliant and courageous Queen Esther, who saved the Jewish people. If you'd like to learn more about Purim, PJ Library offers book lists, videos, activities, and more. They're also the fine folks who make this podcast possible. Check out pjlibrary.org slash Purim. That's P as in party, U R I M as in magic for Purim. Rita, this is my first time celebrating Purim. What do you like about it so much? Hmm. Dressing up in costumes? Staying up late? Bringing treats to friends? Yelling boo whenever someone says Haman? Eating Hamantaschen, especially the apricot kind? And of course, sharing the story of Queen Esther. Well, Rita, if I remember it correctly, though, that story is kind of, um, well, you know, it's like there's these guys and, and the, you know, they're... Oh, you're right, Al. The full version of the Purim story that grown-ups listen to when they hear the Megillah or Book of Esther read out loud isn't exactly kid-friendly. There's some violence and some bullying and, well, some other stuff, too. But there are lots of people who have found ways to share the main themes of the Purim story and the bravery of Esther in ways that work for families. And so that's what we're going to do today. In fact, I'm going to share the story with you the same way that my fabulous Uncle Morty used to tell me. Many years ago, a very long time in fact, before you were born, before your parents were born, before my parents were born, there was a place called Shushan. The ruler of Shushan was King Ahashverosh. What's up? Who likes the party? Huh? <laughs> As you can see, King Ahashverosh really loved to have parties. He'd invite everybody all of his best friends and even his not-so-best friends and their not-so-best friends. And he would insist that the Queen Vashti entertain them. Really? Tuesday night karaoke again? <sighs> okay, folks, who signed up to sing Desert Rose? Step right up. I dream of rain, 
Queen Vashti didn't want to have to always dance and entertain the king's friends. Sometimes she just wanted to read a book or hang out with her own friends. Or sit quietly. Is it too much to ask just to sit quietly? I would give my crown for just five minutes of peace and quiet. You are so right. It is nice to just have some downtime once in a while. And just between us, some of King Ahasuerus's friends are just too much, not to mention rude. One day, King Ahasuerus said, If you don't do what I say, you don't get to be queen anymore. Do you think that was the right thing for him to do? No, 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 no. But Queen Vashti stood her ground. She told Ahasuerus, Um, no. Good for her, and she moved away. She was much happier. Happy trails to you. But now, Ahasuerus didn't like being a king without a queen. It felt incomplete. So he decided to look for a new queen. He called up his friend, Mordechai. Oh, and this is a really fun part. So every time you hear me say Mordechai in the story, I want you to say, what a guy. Can we practice really quick? All right, here I go. Mordechai. What a guy. Mordechai. What a guy. Perfect. So the king called his friend Mordechai. What a guy. Up and asked, how should I find a new queen? The answer is simple. You must have a walk-off and a talent show. Whomever proves that they have the best party-hosting skills and is a truly fierce competitor gets to be the new queen. Competitors from all over Shushan lined up to try to be the new queen. They wore flashy outfits, they did tricks, they danced, they sang, there were even backflips. Wow. But no one stood out like Queen Esther did. Instead of a flashy outfit, she wore a simple white costume and she commanded attention. Basically, Queen Esther slayed the game. That's another way of saying she was the best. Ooh, Esther is fantastic. So Esther got her crown and the title of queen. Everyone was happy, especially her uncle, Mordecai. What a guy! Oh, my little zucchini blossom, you are such a star. Aw, thanks, Uncle Morty. So Queen Esther moved into the palace and became the queen. And she was a really good queen, too. Everyone liked her. Well, almost everyone. All right, everyone at home. You've all been doing such a good job whenever I say, Mordecai! What a guy! So here's another way I want you to participate. We're about to meet another character. He is, well... He's the bad guy in this story. His name is Haman. Every time you hear me say his name, I want you to say, Boo! Got it? Boo! Yes, great demonstrating, Al. Thank you. So, where was I? Let's see, Queen Esther was great. Everybody loved her. She slayed the game. Oh, yes. Haman. Boo! Good job, good job did not like Queen Esther at all. He didn't like a lot of people. He was a bad, bad man, truth be told. The people that Haman disliked most of all were the Jewish people. I don't like anyone different from me. I'm the best. Do you think that's okay to be mean or unkind to people for being different than you? Well, let's see what happens. Lies, 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 yeah. Lies, 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 yeah. Haman kept telling fibs and lies to the king to try to convince him that he didn't like the Jewish people either. He lied and lied and fibbed and lied. <laughs> like, wow, is, is that okay? 
Is lying okay? Ugh, I mean, not for me. Shame on you, Haman. Boo! So, Haman... Boo! ...convinced the king that it was best to kick all of the Jewish people out of Shushan. I don't know why, but suddenly I want you all to leave. Whoa! Whoa! What? Hey, listeners, Rita here, and I'm just quickly taking a peek at the Purim gift basket, or Mishloch Manot. Our producer just dropped off to us. Chocolate chili hamantaschen? Whoa, Nelly! Now, you may be wondering, what does a gift basket have to do with the story of Purim? It's a very good question. Sending these to family, friends, and people in your community is a mitzvah or a commandment. You see, when you send gifts, you make people happy, therefore spoiling the plans of one nasty, unfriendly guy named Haman. Boo! <laughs> yes, well done. Let's jump back into our story. Now I need to let you all in on a little secret. Are you ready? It's a good one. Lean in because I have to whisper it. Queen Esther is Jewish. She just hasn't told anyone yet. It never came up. So Queen Esther decided to pay a visit to the smartest person she knew, her uncle, Mordecai. What a guy. Esther sat down with Mordecai. What a guy. And told him all about Haman's evil influence and the terrible idea he'd had. Mordecai. What a guy. Advised Esther to talk to Ahasuerus and tell him all about herself. Esther, who was always very brave, knew what she had to do. Hey, Your Highness, we need to have a talk. I'll be right there. Um, this is kind of an A and B conversation, Haman. You can see your way out. (laughs) Esther, how are you? So, you really want to follow through with this whole ask Jews to leave thing? Mmm, Haman says it's what needs to happen. No one come to my parties anymore or want to hang out with me if I don't do it. Well, there's something you need to know. If you really want all of the Jewish people to leave, then I'm going too. Because I'm Jewish, proudly Jewish, and I'm not going to hide that. Whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait. But, but you're the best. <laughs> we have so much fun together. I don't want you to go. You'll be kicking me out, my Uncle Mordecai, and tons of other great people, just because of who we are. Is that really what you want to do, too? Thanks, Queen Esther, for being so brave and honest with me. You've given me a lot to think about. The king thought and thought. He didn't want to lose Esther. He loved her. He realized that Haman was wrong and that it wasn't okay to hurt or exclude people just for being different. So the king called Haman to his chambers. You wanted to see me? Yeah, so um, you're fired. What? You're off the list for all future parties. What? And you have to leave Shushan until you can learn to treat people better. What? After Haman left, King Ahasuerus decided to have another party, one where everyone could feel included and would only have to dance if they felt like it. He even included a quiet room for people who just wanted a break from the dancing. And that, everybody, is mostly how Queen Esther saved the Jewish people. (sighs) This is nice. It is nice. And that, my friends, is the story of Purim. Wow, Rita, that was pretty great. But you still haven't answered my question. Why do we wear costumes on Purim? Great question, Al. Well, there are a few reasons. I'll explain two of them. First, because much like the miracle of Purim is from Queen Esther revealing herself, people dress up and hide in plain sight on Purim. The second has to do with a really nice Purim tradition of giving to those in need. In the olden days, dressing up in costumes meant that you couldn't tell who the person was asking for help or begging. So for that one day, it protected people's dignity and gave the community a chance to all be equal. Wow, that's deep. 
And so much more than just let's have fun and wear masks. Hey, Rita, where can I learn more about Purim again? We'll be sharing some of our favorite Purim books and activity ideas on gotastorypodcast.com. You can also visit pjlibrary.org for tons and tons of Purim resources. Plus, you can sign up to get free books delivered to your home, too. Free? Really? Really, Al. Now let's wrap up and head on out to that Purim party. (laughs) I want to shake a tail feather. Thanks for listening, everybody. We can't wait to hear all about your Purim celebrations. Deep in the basement of Sofa Shalom There's a dusty library that's really the home Of a magical bookcase to another world When Micah and Miri and their friends are home Where there's wolves and hares living fairy tales Mr. Safer, the golem, and glass shoe sales So come join us for the magic and mystery Maybe even a bit of Jewish history Auntie PJ's here to give us a taste Of all the adventures beyond the bookcase Beyond the bookcase, beyond the bookcase Do I hear my Purim players assembling? Is everyone ready to pick a roll and get started? <laughs> I've got mine. <laughs> Casting agent. Ooh, I like the initiative, Micah. And you know I can always use more behind-the-scenes help. All right, Mr. Agent, take it away. Okay, so, Evie, do you think you can handle playing Queen Esther? Absolutely. Queen Esther was a total boss. Smart, kind, and strong. Plus, I have my junior costumer's kit handy, so I can make an amazing royal gown for myself. The more sparkle, the better. Could you make my costume with pockets, Evie? I feel like King Ahasuerosh would appreciate pockets. You got it. Looks like you kids have got everything covered this year. Perhaps for once I can just sit back and enjoy the spiel. Evie's going to play Esther. I'll be Ahasuerosh. I'm going to play Haman this year. Boo. Boo. Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> Could you all wait until we're on stage? There will be plenty of opportunities to boo Heyman once we're rehearsing. Sorry, Blue. It is my favorite part of the Purim spiel. Getting to be noisy and boo and hiss at the bad guy. I have fond memories of playing Queen Vashti in the 1974 Temple Beth Israel production in Andalusia. Uh, I went just slightly off script. Long story short, I am no longer welcome at Temple Beth Israel. Their loss. I was just channeling the great Queen Vashti when I began my monologue. After all, Vashti herself wasn't one to just obediently follow a script. <laughs> this year's Purim spiel is going to be the best one yet. It is indeed. You kids have things well in hand. I'm off to catalog a few things and organize the soundtrack for the spiel. Have fun, be good. Don't accidentally disappear into a world of stories and fairy tales. What? Nothing. Okay, so let's finish up casting and get to practicing. Has anyone seen Jacob? He needs to pick a role, like, now. He's been running around the library. I can't even get him to stand still long enough to talk about the Purim story. Every time I ask him who he wants to be, he just shrugs. I think he's kind of good with whatever. We only have one more week to get ready. He has to learn his lines. Well, there's always improv, I guess. Improv is actually one of the oldest forms of theater. It dates back to ancient Rome and a telling farce, which were masked, improvised, farcical plays. Kind of makes sense for Purim when we dress up in costumes to disguise ourselves, like how Esther hid her Jewish heritage from King Ahasuerosh. You're on a roll, Blue. And the name Esther actually means hidden in Hebrew. Although some say we dress up because folks used to go door-to-door asking for charity on Purim, and being in disguise helped keep anyone from being embarrassed about asking for help. Hey, Jacob, can you quit running around? We need your help. (sighs) Sorry, Micah. I've got too much to do to slow down now. Uh, what exactly are you doing, other than tearing through the library and pulling random books off shelves? I'm trying to get back to Mashal. (sighs) Oh. We have so many stories we haven't even explored yet. Don't you, don't you all want to visit again? Right now, we need to work on casting this poor spiel. Not getting sucked into a whirling vortex to a land of fantasy. But do we really? Yes. Yes! We've been down here plenty of times when the books have just stayed books. 
Today's a good day to just stay put. Besides, we're still not sure how or why we get brought to Michal. Okay, okay, okay. I really thought this book would do something. I mean, it is called The Big Bad Wolf and the Purim Spiel. Maybe just put it back on the shelf. I don't think Michal is in the cards today. Hey, look! It started glowing! Jacob! <laughs> Sorry! Sorry, I didn't mean to drop the book. Ugh. Great, how are we going to get the porn spiel done? Esther needs to have three costume changes at minimum. Now that we're here in the land of Mashal, we might as well have some fun. There must be a reason that we're here. Fun? There's no time for fun. Oh, hi, Mr. Safefair. Good to see you. You meddling kids again? I don't know if meddling is a fair word. Excuse me? You've interfered in the race between the tortoise and the hare, completely changed Jack B. Nimble and Goldilocks' stories, returned the golden goose to the giant, and aided and abetted as Chicken Little stole six loaves of cola and three bottles of grape juice from me. Oh, um, sorry? Well, it was really only two bottles of grape juice. Ah, <sighs> frankly, I don't have the time to deal with you right now. I'm smack in the middle of directing Mashal's Purim spiel, and I'm also in charge of the costume parade. Hey, we're doing the same thing at home. Mashal's Purim spiel sounds like fun. Then I'm describing it wrong. It's hard work, and no one around here is taking me seriously. Places, people, places! Gustav, <gasps> for the last time I need you behind Little Bo Peep's former sheep. How hard is that to remember? <gasps> Take it, please. Oh, hi, Golem. Almost didn't see you there. Uh, you missed the ten-foot-tall clay guy? I'm narrating this year. It is a very important role. Yes, yes, very important, Golem. Hi, Mr. Safer. Am I late? Little Red Riding Hood? How did you know? The bright red hood kind of gives it away. We might have been there when you swapped from green to red, too. You can just call me Red. Yes, you're late. You think everyone else just got here early? Sorry. I was just heading out to visit my puppy when I remembered I was supposed to be in the Bormspiel rehearsals. And where is Bubby? She should be here, too. All the more reason to check on her. How long is this going to take? Longer if you keep talking. Golem. Would you mind paying Bobby a quick visit? I promised her a basket of muffins. You could have one on your way. Oh, I do love muffins. But I have a very important role as narrator this year. I can't just up and leave during rehearsals. Sorry, Red. We'll do it! Jacob, we don't have time. We need to figure out how to get back to the library and help Auntie PJ with the Purim spiel. Darn! Bubby really has an appetite for muffins today. Whatever am I going to do? I got the basket. Come on, everyone. We can deliver those muffins. We'll be super quick. Huh? Hey! Hey! Places, Red, now! Well, I guess that settles that. Jacob, wait! You don't even know where you're going. He's so impulsive and gets so carried away. Ugh, I wish he would think before he acts. He just has a lot of energy. Like, a lot. Well, we can't let him run into the forest alone. Let's go after him. Don't worry, Miri. We'll make it a quick trip and be back to the library before you know it. I mean, usually we have to do a mitzvah or something before the door home opens back up anyway. And visiting with our elder is a mitzvah. <sighs> oh, fine. Hey, Jacob! Wait up! It's just over the river and through the woods! Thanks so much! More specifically, it's just over the river a mile or so, and then make a right, and a right, and another right, but then a left, and then kind of a leftward right, and then through the woods another few yards. It's... Oh, Safer, you've got to stop doing that. Well, I'm sure this won't end in chaos. <sighs> Slow down, Jacob! Or maybe you should speed up! <sighs> Oh, here's the river. Yeah, and a bridge. <sighs> Once we get through the woods, we should be right... There it is. Bubby's house. The quicker we can say hi to Bubby and give her the muffins, the quicker we can get back to business. 
Let's knock on the door. Mrs. Bubby? Ma'am? We're friends of Red's. We brought you her muffins and... Ah! <gasps> Whoa! Bubby! Look out for the wolf! Wolf? <gasps> Where? <laughs> oh, you mean Zev. Don't worry, kids. This is no big bad wolf. He's one of my dearest friends. Hey there, hep cats and kittens. Name's Zev. I know us wolves have a bad rap, but I promise I'm no bark, no bite. And he just loves jazz. It's true, Bubby Lou. If you got jazz spinning, I'll be there grinning. So you don't blow down houses or eat little pigs or gobble up grandmas? I never would. Besides, this wolf keeps kosher. Good to know. Zev and I have been friends for years now. Ooh, red scent muffins? Any chocolate chip? I think mostly bran. Do bran muffins have chocolate chips? No, they're just plain bran. Oh, she's always making sure I get enough fiber. We're just making plans for this year's Purim Spiel and costume parade. I'm so excited. Shouldn't you be at practice with Mr. Safer? I'm an old lady. I can show up whenever. Nobody tells little old ladies what to do. So who are you playing in the Purim Spiel? Why, Queen Esther, of course. I'm trying to convince Zev to dress up as Haman. Boo! Ah, uh, they just can't help themselves. I told you, Bubby. Old Zev goes a little overboard when he gets dressing up. I don't want any trouble. Remember that time I dressed up as you and gave Red the scare of her life? <laughs> that was quite a day. But Zev, you've got a flair for the dramatic. You'd make a fine Haman. Just picture it. I wish there was some way to musically indicate a fantasy sequence. A harp, a jazzy trumpet tune would be more of my style. That's more like it. Oh, cool beans, Daddy-O. Okay, let's try this Haman thing. I'm imagining it now. I am Haman, worst of the worst. Scum of the scum, hater of the Jewish people, a big Brussels sprouts with peanut butter, and bread muffins without chocolate chips. This three-quarter hat sure is the bee's knees, though. That's the best part of the bee, you know, the knees. Hammond's got style, that's for sure. <laughs> hey there, pals. You've got the wrong guy. Hammond is... <laughs> Well, I can be a scary, mean villain if that's what you're after! <laughs> Whoops. See, Bubby, even in my imagination, it just wouldn't work. I can't be the villain. I go overboard and I get carried away. Ah. Uh. People say that about me all the time. They say I'm a little much. Remember when you used all the glitter in the whole supply room on that Vashti mask? <laughs> or, you know, when you ran around knocking all the books off the shelves in the library? Or, you know, when you ran over the river and through the woods to Bubby's house when we really needed to be working on our Purim spiel? I'm sorry, everybody, but you know, that's just me. There are some things I can't totally control. I'm like my grandpa. Got a little bit of the wiggles. Hey there, hip cat. I feel you on that. Tends to make my day go kersplat. I've got a bad case of the wiggles myself, but it comes out on a growl or a howl, and then everyone runs away. Gives me the blues every time when I'd rather be smooth jazz. Well, Zev, maybe Haman isn't the way to go. How about Ahasuerus, the suggestible king who marries Esther and makes some questionable choices, but ultimately spares the Jewish people? Hmm. Let me mull that over. Maybe a little jazzy trumpet could help me imagine what that would be like. Cool. Thanks, sound guy. 
Okay, let's try a Hasvarosh. <coughs> Check it out. I'm royalty. And again, with the sweet headgear, I'm rocking a very hip, bejeweled crown. If I do say so myself. I make a great king. I do decree that we throw the swingiest shindig this place has ever seen. We're gonna need the best music, the biggest dance floor, the most talented dancers, and the greatest food you've ever seen! <laughs> All right! And since I'm the king around here, you peasants in the audience get to work at my razzle-dazzle soiree. Get excited for a night of serving drinks and cleaning up after other people. <laughs> That's how the system works, Daddy-o. And I don't make the rules. Oh, wait. Yes, I do. I'm the king. Well, somebody needs to do the dirty work. <laughs> Hey now, not Coolsville. Stop throwing stuff at your king. We're throwing tomatoes now? That's wasteful, and nothing makes old Zev angry like wasting produce. <laughs> I'm out of here. Sorry. See? Even in my imagination, I take things a step too far. And suddenly, my wolf side comes out. And old Zev just can't cool down. Mm, buddy, I get the same way. I may not growl like a wolf, but I do get overexcited. Zev, there are other characters you could play. What about Vashti, who refused to show off her beauty for the king's banquet? A total feminist icon. Try to imagine this one, Zev. Oh, old Zev's digging this fine frock and glittery tiara. I feel like the fanciest kitten at the cat fest. Oh, meow, meow. <laughs> oh, come on. Cut your wolf pal some slack for once. I didn't even growl this time. What? You don't think I look hip in this dress? <laughs> that didn't go so well either, huh? You think? My emotions got the better of me that time. Even in my imagination again. Tough to cool down when everyone around you is burning up. <sighs> it's hard out there for a wolf. Especially one who digs a cool costume. I ever tell you about the time your pal Zev dressed up in sheep's clothing? Zev, we've been friends for quite a while now. I wonder if you have trouble controlling your emotions. You could channel your energy into something else when you feel like you're going overboard? That's a really good idea. Like, what if, instead of roaring or howling when you get upset, you took a few deep breaths and count it to five. Oh, that's so crazy, it just might work. I can't promise it'll always stop old Zev from howls, growls, or fowls, but I'll give it a go. I like the sound of that too. It can be really hard for me to settle down too, but taking a big deep breath helps for sure. And counting would help you focus. Zev, you want to try it together? Right on. One. Two, three, four, five. Well, how do you feel? Oh, pretty good, Bobby. Not bad. You want to take another crack at another Purim character? What about Esther's cousin, Heroic Mordecai? He uncovered the evil plot, refused to bow to Haman, and helped Esther save the Jewish people. Whoa! Or the high was awesome. I'd say he was a mensch, a good, honorable person, just like you, Zev. Ah, uh, Bobby, you're making me blush. Let me give it a quick think a roo through and give more to high a try. Imagination sequence commence. A cloak, hip hat, a slick gray beard. More high's my man. Eek, a wolf. Help! One, two, 
three, four, five. Hey, stay cool, daddy O's. I'm not here to huff or puff. I tend to sneeze loudly. Allergies. But that's another story. You don't have to be afraid of me. Why don't you hepcats try taking a deep breath, too? <gasps> I'm Mordechai, and I'm here to help save the Jewish people. Oh, yeah. 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 All right, all right, all right. Way to go, Zev. I knew you could do it. Thanks, Bubby. Looks like Mordechai is it. But wait. I need a costume in real life, not just jazzy trumpet fantasy imagination land. Check out the time. No chance we can whip up a motor high look so fast. Don't worry about that, Zev. I have my trusty junior costumers kit. And with a couple cotton balls, a part of Bubby's blue bathrobe, and... Jacob, can I borrow your hat? For Zev? Sure. With a few tweaks, I'll have you all set. You've been carrying that kit with you this whole time? A costume designer should always be prepared, Miri especially for a fashion emergency like this. Let's see, a little glue, a couple of stitches, maybe add a fancy button, or three. Or five, or six, or seven, or eight, or... <sighs> You're right, three is good. Looks <sighs> perfect. This outfit's ace. Thanks for the help, cool cats. You're welcome. Now, you'd better get to the Purim spiel before Mr. Safer flips his lid. If he hasn't already. Miss Bobby, shall we get to getting? You got it, Zev. Come along, kids. Let's go, everyone. Hugs and Oh, darn. I was really looking forward to seeing the Michelle costume parade. Oh, that was a rough landing. Oh. oh, hey. I never noticed those things on the side of the bookcase before. Has anyone seen my bookmark? I think it fell out as we came through. Ah, oh, here it is. Does that look like a key? Oh, hi there, children. I didn't even see you there, but I'm certain you were here the whole time and not off on some fantastic adventure. I've still got plenty of roles to cast in the Purim spiel. If you're still willing to help me, that is. Absolutely. Well, I'm a Hoshverosh. Evie's going to play Esther. Blue will be Haman. Jacob, any thoughts on who you'd like to be? You know, I think I want to play Mordechai. I want to be a hero just like him. Brave and smart and kind. And a mensch. <laughs> sure, Jacob, that sounds perfect. We know you're all those things. And a great friend, too. I'll get started on your costume now. How do you feel about flowy blue robes and a bright yellow cap? Sounds like it'll be the cat's pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Deep the basement of Sofa Shalom. There's a dusty library that's really the home of a magical bookcase to another world. When Micah and Miri and their friends are home, where there's wolves and hares living fairy tales. Mr. Safe at the Golem and Glass Shoe Sales. So come join us for the magic and mystery. Maybe even a bit of Jewish history. Auntie PJ's here to give us a taste. Auntie PJ, how can you possibly say that jelly beans are a part of Purim? I cannot count the number of Purims I have celebrated in all my years. Elijah, and Elijah, please. We have always kept the door open to you. That's a Passover tradition. We had no idea you were real, though. So please, Elijah, keep your mind open to us. Jelly beans may not have factored into your Purim because you have never been a librarian. How does that make sense? Because librarians provide much more than books. Whoa! Whoa! Are we making Kroggers? Hi, Jacob. Hi, Blue. 
Yes, Auntie PJ is helping us make homemade groggers for Sofer Shalom's Purim Carnival later. Glad you could make it. I am also a pretty spectacular craft, Arian, if I do say so myself. We get a bad rap for just being all about the shh. I don't mind a good shush. Noisemakers are not my favorite part of Purim, I have to admit. Why do we have them anyway? I forget. Groggers will be so fun to shake at our Purim spiel later whenever the villain Haman is mentioned. We boo and shake these noisemakers to drown out his evil name. It's a cacophony of joyous resistance. I'm so glad you'll all be there to see me take on my dream role of Vashti. Evie is upstairs now, dropping off some very interesting buttons she excavated that will make it stand out nicely. Evie is so good at finding treasures. Thanks, Micah. I'm all done upstairs. Hi, everyone. Hi, Evie. Hi, Hi, Evie. Evie. We put the final touches on your Vashti dress, Auntie PJ. It's looking fit for a queen. Or ex-queen. Oh, thank you so much. And you're just in time for our Grogger craft project. So, we have paper plates, glue, all sorts of markers to decorate. And of course, jelly beans to go in between the plates to make noise when we shake them. Oh, that's what they're for. Elijah! Sorry. How many queens are in the Purim story again? Two, Vashti and our hero, Queen Esther. Remember, Queen Esther told the... Wait, wait a minute. How did you eat all the jelly beans so quickly? Well, never mind that. I have more stashed in the back closet. Come on, Elijah. Let's go look. Yum. I wish we were making masks like last year. Now, the costume part of Purim, I can definitely get into. Oh, yeah. That was fun. Didn't you dress as an octopus, Blue? They are very intelligent animals. Eight is a lot of legs, though. Uh Uh-huh, tell me about it. Hey, uh, has anyone seen the yellow markers? They seem to have all vanished. Ugh, how annoying. I was gonna make my grogger look like gelt. Weird. They should be with all the other colors right over... Hang on. Where'd this fancy mask come from? Whoa, that's fancier than anything we would have made last year. It, It looks like it's made of gold. It's just paint, but yes, it's gorgeous. And look, inside it says, um, Joyo Purim. Is that French? Auntie PJ speaks some French. Ooh, remember that huge Purim festival in Paris she told us about? Maybe this mask is from there. Wherever it's from, I know who it belongs to. Look at this inscription here. Viens me trouver Joha. I know what the Joha part means. He's taunting us again. Oui, oui. And the other part means, come and find me. Wow, I remember more than I thought. That trickster Joha replaced our markers with this clue. That can only mean one thing. I would bet anything he's in Paris. Grab a mask, kitties. I found some in the jelly bean closet. We have a Purim carnival to get to. But shouldn't we... A Paris, mes amis, to the Atlas. We're going to Paris! Paris, France, <laughs> right? Yellow Not one. Paris, Texas. Okay, fingers on the map. Don't forget the password. Oh, wait. Micah and I didn't go last time. What is it? It's Nazus. We say it on three. Atlas, take us to the Purim Carnival in Paris. One, two, three. Nazus! Was that what it was like when you guys went to Michigan's Pies in New York City? Ugh, unfortunately. Look, is that a bouncy house? Le bouncy house. They have those in Paris? They have those at Purim? Ugh, look at all these games! This is like a real carnival! You are right about this place, Auntie PJ! (gasps) Look at that beautiful woman's dress! I'm betting she's dressed as Esther! Oh, and there's a Haman! Oh. See his three-cornered hat? Wait, it, that's okay, right? Yes, now you are in the spirit. But don't forget your mission to find Joha. Elijah and I will be right behind you, blending in. Isn't that right, monsieur? <sighs> we... Okay, Joha can be anywhere. Ring toss? No. Glitter booth? Ooh. Uh, 
but no. Sadly. Hey, wait a minute. You see that clown over there? Telling stories to that group of kids? Doesn't he look like... Let's go! Go! One Esther heard of Haman. <laughs> Terrible plan for the Jews. She went to her husband, King Ahasuerus, and told him bravely, if you are sending all the Jews away, then you are sending me away too, for I am Jewish. The king loved Esther, as did everyone. She was great. And he realized that Haman <laughs> had poisoned his mind against the Jewish people. So he banished him from the kingdom. Esther had saved her people. Esther was a hero. Yeah! Happy end! Woohoo! And Esther was. Oh! Hello, kids! Oh my, what lovely, nice masks you're wearing! How did he know it was us? Joha! We found you! <laughs> yeah, and not a moment too soon. These kids all speak French. They don't understand a word I'm saying! <laughs> Au revoir, carnival kids! Joyeux Purim! <laughs> <laughs> Now, uh, what were you saying? Uh, something about, ah, yes, that you found me. <laughs> and I'm so glad you did. For there is no place I'd want us all to be than at this exquisite Purim Carnival, celebrating a story of Jewish triumph and heroism. Dom, walk with me, talk with me, to the Hamantaschen booth. Oh, I haven't had one in seven minutes, and I am famished. <laughs> what do you mean, triumph and heroism? I thought Purim was just about the fun. Oh, it's a fun holiday for sure. But think about why we celebrate. Esther telling her truth, revealing herself as Jewish to the king, and saving her people. What a legend! Have you read the Megillah lately? Wonderful stuff. Yes, the Megillah is the book of Esther. Our synagogue is doing a reading of it before our Purim spiel. Auntie PJ is going to play Vashti. Oh, Vashti! Oh, man. Talk about another incredibly strong and truthful woman. Mm. Before Esther was married to the king, Vashti was queen, okay? And when the king pressed Vashti to do things she did not want to do, she stood up for herself, even though the cost was great. Now that's power. Oh. Ooh, the hamantaschen. Oh, apricot and raspberry. And, oh, is that chocolate hazelnut? Oh, oh my goodness, we'll take 50. 50? <laughs> yes. I'll show you why in a moment. <laughs> oh, oh, who knows about the mitzvah of Mishloach Manot? Those are the gift baskets we make. Huh? Hmm. Say, I wonder if any of you extremely smart young people know of the other traditions around Purim. Well, I know there are four mitzvahs. No, it's Vult. That's how you say it. Around Purim. Oh, wait, I know. Go for it. Um, telling the story. I, I mean, reading the scroll. So, that's one. Gift baskets for our friends and neighbors is what we already talked about. With two portions of each thing. Yeah, great work. And then, there's also giving money to those in need and enjoying a wonderful meal together. Ding, 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 ding. Absolutely correct. Well done. Joha, this means we're going to give away some hamantaschen, doesn't it? <laughs> Indeed it does. What could be more fun and lovely than everyone enjoying the same wonderful treats? We all deserve it on this holiday, don't you think? Yes, and then we'll take you back with us. After all, we found you fair and square this time. Ooh, yeah, about that. Uh, why don't you brilliant kids just hold these cookies, you eat as much as you like, yum, 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 and give the rest away to anyone who looks like they could use some hamantaschen. I'll, uh, I'll be right back. But, Joha, you... Joha? Um, hello? Hey, where is he? No, are we all alone? The Joha has vanished once again, mes amis. PJ and, and Elijah! Have you been here the whole time? Oui, oui. This is très important. Wait, I can't keep doing this accent. It was great, Elijah. I believed you. Merci. Joha may have escaped us again, but he did get us all these hamantaschen to share. Want to help? That'd be wonderful. But how do we know who needs a cookie? I don't want to embarrass anyone by assuming that they're hungry. We just want to help. Everyone gets a cookie. Oh, it's kind of like Joha said. If we give something to everyone, no one feels singled out. 
and giving to others is similar to the mitzvah of giving mishloach menot. The gift baskets we've been making with our families? But don't we need more than just ham and tashin for those? Ahem. Luckily for you all, I took a cue from Micah and happened to store some extra jelly beans, fresh one, in my pockets. Oh, yes. So now we have jelly beans and ham and tashin to share. Wow, this holiday kind of gets better and better. Well, I'm ready to walk around and share, and then maybe get back to the library. We don't want you to miss your big debut, Auntie PJ. Yes, let's go! Yama,